In this video I want to talk about it's definitely something different, uh, a cultural difference, but it's, uh, you know, but it's also oppression, really, what it comes down to is oppression, and I did some videos along on this, I don't know if I'll, I'm one or two that I'll put it up, I'll just sum some of this up right here, but I've been around um, too many people who have the, a, a view that, of where, what women should do and men should do. Okay, that old, really old view that in where I live in the United States, grew up in Texas, they don't even think of things, you know, none of us, I don't think very many people think in terms of, you know, where a woman's place is, <laughs> and that she has to um, get permission from her husband or a man, you know, a relative or what, you know, some man to do certain things. And you, or um, you have like duties that you have to, you know, do. You know, like you serve your man, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Oh man, it's extremely oppressive, you know. And if you want to go somewhere, you have to get, you know, I'm, even as big as going out of the country, you have to have their permission, or just going to the store. You know, they, they have this kind of uh, culture, and they believe in this stuff, you know. And expect that you will mind their culture. You will respect their culture. No, I won't. <laughs> I'm not going to respect, you know, as in respect, but, you know, abide by their culture is the right word. I'm not about to. Forget that, you know. And, you know, being around this when, you know, you're around more than one person who believes in this. And uh, they try to guilt you, you know. Uh, they give you those looks because they do speak a different language and they don't, pref they don't, they consider it rude if they don't speak their native language, even though they all, you know, if they all speak English and me, you know, or another person does not speak their language, but only speaks English. They, they consider it rude if they don't speak their own language all the time. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I see that as rude to me, you know, because they speak English. You see? Yeah, but being around this, you know, is unbelievable when it's long term and all the pressure they put on you to, like I said, you know, to abide by their culture and their rules for women that, you know, are really, you know, oppressive. Yeah, it gets to you, you know, really, or it has to me, but I can still separate it whenever the other day my blood pressure was extremely high. I, uh eventually realized that it had a lot to do with avoiding being around whenever they would cook and eat because I don't like food that's been cooked 12 hours just to make one meal and it just doesn't taste right. I was I didn't grow up on it and it's got too ma many carbs for someone like me that's type 2 diabetic that's diabetic as bad as mine is take medication for it and all. I can't eat everything stuffed with rice or potatoes or potatoes, you know, mixed with it. No, sorry, can't do that. And uh, I'm not really sorry, but no, I can't do that. <laughs> but I'm here to get a hamburger and french fries. Yeah, <laughs> funny. But yeah, I was eating wrong. That's what that's what it was. I was eating things that I could quickly get out of the refrigerator. You know, um, that and it wound up being something that had too many, too many, too much sodium in it. So, yeah, you know, I finally realized that I did that too much in, like, two days in a row. And that was probably why my um, blood pressure was so high. And it, it got better. It went down. But the stress, the, the bottom one has always been too low, in my opinion, when it gets down to, like, 50s and 60s. But the doctor says it's fine. But anyway, um, the top is high. And I still think that is because of the stress. The stress of being around something that is so oppressive. You know, like one of them told me that that we passed by um, a football field. And she said, "What's is that the, a football field? And I said, yeah. And she said, we're not allowed. Women are not allowed to go to, to football, to, to a football field to see football. And I said, well, why? You know, she didn't have an answer. It's just accepted that that is what it is. So around stuff like that and hearing stuff like that that just goes against everything that I believe in you know and yes I know I'm Texan and football yeah but 
I don't I don't go to football games by the way. I'm not all been into it, but um, to to be around that and then to feel that you know subtle pressure because whenever you know like if I'm alone with one they they of course speak English and uh, you know because they're not going to get anything out of me <laughs> you know I'm not going to understand anything they're saying so to hear this kind of thing oh it's just it's so oppressive just to hear that there are other women who are going through that you know and. So what made me think about this was today I was I woke up um, at three o'clock in the morning and uh, couldn't go back to sleep. I think I went I felt you know finally like took a nap at around nine thirty and woke up at eleven thirty and I woke up angry. Okay. And uh, and I was just I guess I was so I don't know. And I was anger mixed with you know just waking up and I just got you know got everything ready and I took off out the door didn't even say I was I just said bye I'm going didn't even really wait to see if they heard me because I needed to get away you know and there's like a really thick guilt feeling I kept thinking on it as I was leaving how you know you have to tell somebody well, usually you, I think you would if you live with somebody or you're married to somebody and you say okay I'm going to the store or whatever I was going to the library and uh, I actually I was just going to get away and the library was somewhere I needed to go to pick up an interlibrary loan that was due to be picked up today so but to go you know and I thought about how these poor women first of all some of them might not even be able to drive they can drive have their driver's license but do they know how there's always the man driving and they have to ask permission to go somewhere to drive all that and I was thinking you know it was something making me so sad really anyway I got to this place I need to go to the restroom so I don't want to go home right now I want to to have a time to chill out and from all this oppression hearing about it, seeing it watching them, you know, watching people oh but anyway so I came to this place and I thought, oh if I don't get them something you see what I'm saying? oh I better call and ask oh it, it just can get into you you know, to where you feel guilt you know for, you know, for not doing a Fighting by it, and you know I'm not going to. But it can get under your skin. It can get into your psyche that where you don't want it to be, and you don't realize it. You know, it's like wake up, hello. You don't have to do that. You don't have to always think about what they want, and you know get permission to do it. Wow, <laughs> you know seriously. I do remember some of this here when I was um, where I grew up at least when I was um, in high school. I had joined the debate club. Me and my friends did. And we, we would join clubs that um, that were interesting to us enough to join them, but mainly for the trips. <laughs> you had to pay for them, though, you know. But one was the debate cl club, and I was told, informed after we'd been going to all these seminars and learning how to do it and everything, I was told that girls can't debate. This was in the 19... 70s, late 1970s, early 1980s, I don't know which one, but um, I graduated 81, so anyway, I asked the, it was a coach, it was a football coach, you know, and I asked him why, he said, it's just how it is, and I said, no, I want to know why, why it is like this, well, it just is, well, he, he wasn't much on debate, was he? <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, that that existed in my lifetime, and uh, I do remember when I was in my twenties. So say in the, um, I guess it was back in the nineteen eighties, also later nineteen eighties. Um, a woman telling me we were I was at a job. It was a temporary job, and the temporary job we were just I think I was yeah I was a student in a temporary job, and we were uh, stuffing envelopes. Okay, and there was a table of us doing that, and. Uh, an older woman told us about how, you know, that women couldn't have bank accounts when she was young and uh, not until, and she told us sometime, I think it was actually in the 1970s, she was telling us that it finally changed to where the woman didn't have to put, you know, it wasn't Mr. and Mrs. and his first name and his last name. You know, I, when I got married, I was told if I didn't change my last name to his name that, that um, you know, the, the Social Security office could get me for that. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. 
but she was telling us that you know women couldn't have bank accounts in their own name and they couldn't own property in their own name and I'm like really yeah you don't think about that so of course I you know does somebody want to go backwards in time really <clears throat> I think that's enough for this video for now plus there was a guy that got it looks doesn't look all that great got way too close to my SUV <laughs> so <laughs> walking he was walking yeah we still haven't got past that now have we women really have to be worried about themselves you know oh boy so enough for this video for now if you want to subscribe click the circle if you want to watch another video on this channel click one of the rectangles like subscribe comment and share if you would and i'll talk to you on another video